Malcolm Glasgow, the chaplain for the district, not the district, I'm sorry, for the state of, of Ohio, for the American Legion, will now lead the invocation. For those of you who are, un are covered, please uncover. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, bless this city of Columbus 9-11 Memorial Remembrance Service here today on this 14th anniversary of the worst attack on America since Pearl Harbor in 1941, where 2,996 innocent Americans at the World Trade Towers in New York City, a field near Shanksville, Pennsylvania, and the Pentagon in, the, in Washington, D.C., gave their lives in the name of freedom. Let the victims' names and memories be cherished, honored, and praised by their grieving families and all Americans forever and ever and never forgotten. In your name we pray, for God and for country. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as the downtown high school junior ROTC will post the colors. allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Al. Now please join Mr. Udo Marosher of the Navy League as he sings our national anthem. And please do feel free to join in. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the Please be seated. I would like to thank Mayor Coleman for helping to make this event possible. I would like to now make some introductions. Fire Chief Kevin O'Connor and Police Chief Kim Jacobs, would you please stand? We have many deputy chiefs, commanders, and first responders here today. The people that run towards the danger, and they never flinch. Would you please all stand, those who are serving in uniform or who have served, 
and be recognized. Thank you very much. I'd also like to thank Michael Dussman for attending. He's representing Senator Portman. Council members Page, Hardin, and Tyson are here as well. Thank you all for attending. And right here up front um, is Joseph and Nikolai Majori, who are here with our speaker. And uh, Nikolai actually got out of school just so he can be here with us in Columbus. So thank you for coming today, both of you. And a final thank you to Major Klepik and Master Sergeant Gibson and the Downtown High School Junior ROTC for all of, your, all of you coming out and providing your young future leaders who are here to escort everyone to their seats. And finally, thank you to the City Veterans Committee for all their hard work in making all of this happen. No, this is the 14th anniversary of the day that changed our world. And although years have passed, the wounds are still fresh. They're in our minds and in our hearts. It's a day when the world seemed to stop turning. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, our mayor of the city of Columbus will say a few words. Mayor Michael B. Coleman. Rick, I always uh, am grateful for all the work that you, you do for us, uh, for those in uniform every day. I'm grateful for that. And I want to uh, welcome our guest uh, here in our great city. And uh, he provided me with this um, shoulder badge, shoulder? shoulder badge. Uh, from the fire department of the city of New York. Uh, and, uh, and I will never forget 9-11, never forget it. And never forget uh, how the New York firefighters and police officers um, went towards the falling building as everybody else is going, running from it to save their lives, and you risked your life. And I want to thank all of you for participating in this remembrance. This is the 14th anniversary, and we look back and remember where we were on that fateful day of September 11, 2001. We're also here to thank the thousands of men and women who have bravely answered the military's call to duty in the months that followed 9-11. One of them with my own son, who served in Iraq two tours and is now a Green Beret. Proud of him and proud of his work. So it gives us cause to reflect on where we've come since that fateful day. We always need to thank our police officers, and I think I have the best division of police in the entire nation right here in the city of Columbus, and our firefighters, and I strongly believe I have the best division of fire and firefighters in the entire nation right here in the city of Columbus. And I thank you every day for all you do for all of us. And I was I am one of maybe three mayors in the nation that was the mayor on 9-11-2001 that is still mayor today. I can remember that day as if it were yesterday. I will never forget. It changed my life. It changed me as a mayor as to how I think about things in life, and how I think about whether our nation could be attacked uh, from terrorists on our own land, on our own land. I was there, and I saw and led the reaction in our city, and in my office, at the very moment the second tower came down, I had standing next to me someone who was a New York consultant, who had his whole team from New York, who had family members that were in the tower that collapsed. He washed it from my office. It was a horrible thing, 
horrible thing. I will never forget it. And so safety, whether from the common criminal to the terrorist, is the most important thing we can provide, safety, whether in fire or whether in police. It's the most important thing we can provide our citizens. And our first responders, especially young, you young folks up there, I want you to know that you and we and we all need to respect and honor our first responders because they put their lives on the line every day for all of us, in every way for all of us, not just to protect against terrorists, to protect us against crime and property and life damage and fires. We need to honor them. We need to embrace them and respect them for all they do for us. And that's what 9-11 is about. And to remember all those thousands of people that were killed and murdered on that day, that fateful day. All of us who were alive at that time will remember that day as if it were yesterday. So I'm here to embrace you, to show the rest of our city, our state, and our nation what you mean to all of us as citizens. And sir, thank you very much. You're brave, you're courageous, and I'm honored that you are here with us today to share this very important moment with us. God bless you. And now I have proclamations. proclamations. I always forget the stuff I'm supposed to do. <coughs> sure. Lieutenant. Lieutenant, you come forward. I want to present you this proclamation on behalf of uh, courage, and I want you to take it back to New York, how much the city of Columbus appreciates you and your entire team for all you've done. God bless you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much for those words. Many of our city's directors are here today, as well as Mr. Hugh Dorian and Department Service Director Suzette Price. Would you all please stand? So, directors? Thank you. Thank you all for attending. And now we appreciate the, the words. It is now my pleasure to bring to the podium Council Member Eileen Paley who is also the chair of the Veterans Committee. Thank you, Mr. Isabel. I am Councilmember Eileen Paley, and I bring you greetings from Council President Andrew Ginther, as well as my other colleagues on Council. I'm happy to see Councilmember Shannon Harden, Jiza Page, and Priscilla Tyson have joined us here today. As chair of the Veterans Committee for City Council, it is my honor to be here with you all today. First, I would like to thank all of our first responders, especially those here in Columbus, for their service this day and every day in the city of Columbus. The question most people ask others today is, where were you on 9-11 when the towers fell? My memory of that day is very vivid. Today, as if it were yesterday, 14 years ago, I was in the juvenile courthouse of Franklin County when the first towers fell at 846. I remember huddling around the security desk with all the other attorneys and children that were in the juvenile court. I felt that our city acted quickly and responded. The courthouse was almost immediately locked down, and then most of the downtown was closed. I want to thank Mayor Coleman and the administration of the city for making sure that everyone in the city of Columbus was safe at that time. Our city, in fact, our community, came together immediately. This was a time when our nation was in need of hope. 
strength, and security. Hope that things would get better. Hope that we would quickly find those responsible and the strength, strength to recover, strength to stay united, and then the security to encourage our children that they are protected and that their future would be secure. Thank you, Mary Coleman and Mr. Rick Isabel for honoring this moving ceremony today in council chambers at City Hall, the People's House. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Council Member Paley. And now it is my pleasure to ask our special guest speaker to come to the podium. And I would also like to thank Mr. Warren Motts from Motts Military Museum for bringing him here to our fair city. Because if it weren't for Mr. Motts, I don't think we'd have the good lieutenant here with us. And so he runs a great ship out there. If you have never seen Motts Military Museum, please go see it. It is really deep history of Ohio and our military. And now without further ado, Lieutenant Dominic Majori. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for allowing me to speak here. And please forgive me, but I'm not accustomed to speaking in public. Um, again, I would like to thank Warren, not only for bringing me here, but for the friendship I've had with him for the last 13 and a half years. Um, I left some handouts for some, some people that have seen them. Some of you are probably wondering, how did this guy from New York get to come to Groveport, Ohio, actually, not Columbus? On November 9, 2001, I was working at Ground Zero, and my hands got cold, and I went to the Red Cross and got a pair of gloves. A pair of gloves among tens of thousands. And when I put my hand in the glove, there was a letter and a penny, heads up, from a six-year-old boy from Baltimore, Ohio, named Joshua Matthews. Joshua went on about, you know, briefly in the letter, hope these hands keep you warm and safe and God bless. Cub Scout Pack number 187. 187 is my shield number. Those of you in uniform know exactly what that means, okay? I was taken by it. I, I, was, I was upset, but yet I was lifted. As soon as I could, as soon as there was a break in the action, I contacted the Baltimore Fire Department through Jim Height, who was a chief at the time, and we made arrangements. That January, my son, now a college graduate, but a, a Cub Scout at the time, and I came to Ohio for the first time to Baltimore. As the chief knew that we were coming, two employees from Delta Airlines donated their family passes for my son and I to fly. Hampton Inn put us up for three days. Bob Chevrolet here in Columbus gave us a brand new avalanche, which I never drove. Either the fire chief or the police chief or, or, or the assistant chief drove us around. It was as if the president came to town. It was a very tough time for me and my son. But here was this nine-year-old kid signing autographs as if he were the president. That Friday, there was the scout meeting. And when every citizen of Baltimore, Ohio, and then some, were there. And, and I spoke to them. And, and the kids were great. And forgive me, but I'm getting a little confused. When I first came that Thursday, I walked into Joshua Matthews' classroom unannounced. Right? When I got there, the principal was waiting for me at the door, crying. There was posters all over the place. I walked in and surprised Joshua. And then they had an assembly for the whole school, at which time I presented him with my helmet. And like I said, at that point, every, everyone who was available was there too. When, when I came to town, they, they just treated me like, like I was the president and my son. And it was something that we really needed. And so I think it was at that point that I decided I was going to be a resident of Ohio. By choice, not by geography. One of the kids in that, troop, in, in that Boy Scout troop, or the Cub Scout troop rather, 
is the great nephew of Warren Motts. I had brought a bunch of patches, as some of you know, and, and all kinds of stuff from New York to give to these kids. Warren got a hold of, or, or found out through his brother or, or his great nephew, and he reached out to me. I'm up in New York in, in the midst of all of this, and this guy from Groveport, Ohio, calls me and, you know, wants to talk to me and wants to, you know, a little skeptical. But he was very persistent, as I find that several people have said, few people say no to Warren Motts when he needs something. Um, we met, and it was history from there. I, the first anniversary of 9-11, Warren came up to New York, and we went down to the site, which no one except responders were allowed to do. And um, like I said, it, it's been history since then. I've been involved with Warren. I've been here several times. Um, there's a couple of things I'd like to also talk about. The chaplain took away part of my speech here <laughs> when, he, when he said how many people were killed on 9-11. I just want to elaborate a little bit on that. On, on September 11th, 343 firefighters were killed. 37 Port Authority police officers were killed. 23 New York City police officers were killed. All right. Also, a figure that, that is kind of obscure, but there were also 55 military personnel were killed. And something that's even more important to me, since 9-11, 1,400 emergency workers, first responders, have died from 9-11 related di diseases or injuries, and growing at the rate of about 120 a year. I'm fortunate, I have some issues, but obviously I'm here to talk about it, and life is good, right? There are a lot of stories, good and bad, coming out, in, out of New York about, you know. I'd like to share a story about a very good friend of mine. His name is Carlos Lilo. He's a young, a little bit younger than me, Puerto Rican guy, started, I broke him in. We were partners for a while. And you guys all know what a partner is. And um, I moved off. I became a supervisor. It turns out I came back and supervised him as well um, for a short time. On 9-11, we have pictures through the media and stuff. Carlos ran in to the towers, ran in. As a matter of fact, he was such a happy-go-lucky guy. I used to call him Bam Bam because he's one of those kind of guys that just, he was gonna make it everything good, he was gonna change things. The first time he ran into the towers, he came out carrying a woman full of blood. You guys understand the, the impact of that. When, when you're rendering care to people that are bleeding, you, don't, you just don't do that. You, know, you have certain precautions, but he didn't care. He went in, he grabbed this woman, pulled her out, carried her by himself, tended to her a little bit, handed her off, and that wasn't enough. He went back in again. And there's another set, another photo, another couple of photos of him helping another person out. Again, all bloodied up, him in uniform just doing his job. And that wasn't even enough. Carlos went into tower the third time. Unfortunately, he didn't come out until about two months later when we found his remains. Okay, and, and that's what it's all about. I hope, especially you young people, understand how, how, how this is and how important this is. And, and I love the fact that, that you guys are here. We, we need to continue to never forget and, and keep the memory alive. Also, in that um, little packet I gave you, there's a picture of, a, of an ambulance crew standing in front of an ambulance. And the city of Akron, Ohio, donated an ambulance shortly after. On, on September 11th, we lost 98 vehicles. Um, 
the, the, the help and the enthusiasm and, and the well-wishing came from all over the country in every way you can imagine. And I'm, I'm here because it's 9-11 it's and, and, and I want to urge you people, Warren Motts has got ladder truck 18 that was destroyed on 9-11 in his warehouse. He's got two Port Authority police cards. He's got the second largest collection of September 11th artifacts in the country, second only to the one in New York City. And we're trying to raise some money, or he's trying to raise some money, for a building to house them in instead of a warehouse. And so I urge all of you to help in any way you can. All right? And I know I'm jumping around because I'm quite a bit nervous here, but I appreciate very much you having me here. And like I said, I, I'm, I'm a, a citizen of Ohio by choice, not by geography. Again, thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you, Lieutenant Majori. It's quite a story, quite many stories. And there are many, many more. So yes, we should remember, we should never forget. And in the vein of all of that, I would ask for you all to please rise again for a moment of silence. That was Officer Frank Hedersheet, who was from the Columbus Police Fire Pipes and Drums. And now, I would like you to remain standing as the benediction will be given by Chaplain Malcolm Glasgow. Uncover. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we are about to depart this 2015-9-11 memorial service, grant us safe travel to our final destinations this afternoon, and least we forget all those departed veterans that came from Franklin County, the great state of Ohio and the United States of America, who made that supreme sacrifice so that we may enjoy the freedom and liberty we have here today in the great U.S. of A. Let their names and their memories be cherished, honored, and praised forever and ever. In your name we pray for God and for country. Amen. Amen. I would like to thank City Council for the use of this wonderful chamber. Our guest speakers, 
our hardworking facility staff that work behind the scenes to make all of this happen and set everything up. This concludes our, our ceremony today. I want to thank you all. God bless and safe travels.